Hi everybody, this is a red, black, and green arcane bombardment deck that uses the new card Beseech the Mirror as a way to search up unique spells in our deck until we can get to the point where we can start recycling all of them with our one-of copy of Arcane Bombardment. In order to support Beseech the Mirror over here, we do need something to bargain with, and so that's why we're really going all in on the first couple of turns where we can start making a token or an artifact of some kind. So we have some unusual spells trying to fill that role in our deck, and specifically at the three mana slot. So we've got things like Feed the Cauldron, a removal spell that also gives us a token. We've got Flick a Coin, another spell that draws a card gives us another token. Urabrask's Forge, a nice side win condition that gives us a free token every turn if we need it. And then Obnixilus the Adversary can create a devil and possibly copy himself if we're in the right situation late in the game with something like an Urabrask's Forge or something else. In the two drops, you can see we've got multiple copies of all the key removal spells that we like to play, and then a bunch of one-ofs here for utility situations where maybe we can't bargain Beseech the Mirror, but we can tutor for something and cast it in the same turn because it's cheap enough. So that's why we see a little more variety in the one and two cost spells down here. Now the best value you can get out of Beseech is when you can cast something for four mana for free, and so we're trying to get some good value out of those spells by including things like Unleash the Inferno to just catch a lot of different situations, Big Score for some card draw, which is especially handy when you cast Shieldred the Apocalypse off of Beseech the Mirror for free. We're a little lighter on the high-end stuff because Beseech doesn't help us cast it for free, and I didn't want us to get into too many situations where we had to go tutor with Beseech one turn and then spend and all of our mana playing something expensive the next turn. You really just can't afford to be that slow sometimes, but we do have a few copies of interesting things to go looking for when the time is right. We're running one copy of Ashiok Wicked Manipulator, another thing that makes tokens and has some other flexible abilities for us. Gix's Command, a nice all-around removal spell and can help us gain some life if we need it. Burn Down the House, a wonderful inclusion in any bombardment deck is here as well. And we're also doing one copy, Virtue of Persistence, because it is a spell, and it is kind of a special enchantment that we can maybe steal some of the thunder from some reanimator decks that we might face on the ladder. So yeah, let's go see a few games with this deck over on the rank standard ladder and see just how many favors we can squeeze out of this mirror. All right, we're trying something a little bit different today. You'll notice we're moving a little quickly here. Had some audio issues, so I decided we're going to speed up the whole thing, do some commentary from on high after the fact. Our opponent's starting off pretty standard here with a Reckless Storm Seeker. We're doing an Obnixilis, but just the vanilla version to get a token. We're just trying to build up towards Beseech the Mirror here so that we can bargain it and immediately cast the thing that we find. Now our opponent's got some big beefy green creatures here to go along with the Stormseeker. That's a really nasty combination and can lead to some really quick games. They've got the Monstrous Rage, of course, to beef up the Stormseeker, but we don't really care. We don't really care if Obnixilis dies. We, we're actually just kind of going for the token here. Now we're going to play Shieldred instead of Beseech because I recognize how much trouble we're in here with uh, Stormseeker. Any other card they play is going to get immediately hastified. You see, we check Godric there. What does that do? It's not a huge deal, but uh, what we're gonna do is just to save some life, we're gonna block with Shieldred here on this uh, bloated guy. Bloated, what's his name? I don't know. We're gonna block it anyway. Shieldred's got death touch. We're sort of threatening to gain life if she stays alive, but you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We're gonna go beseech the mirror now. We're gonna bargain away our little devil token because we can do some tricky math with it. If we hit the Storm Seeker, bring it down to three toughness, we've got one copy of Brotherhood's End in here for this game, and we get to wipe the rest of that board clean away. So you see, we're kind of set up to start recovering with Arcane Bombardment, but our opponent still has the Storm Seeker coming down and threatening to give haste to everything else they've got in their hand. Of course, another Monstrous Rage pumps that up, and we are already down to six. Well, with no thing to bargain with, we have to go searching for something we can play right now, Luckily, we've included some Shieldred's Edicts in here. They don't have any way to protect it, so we're kind of back to square one. Another Contaminator comes down that we're definitely going to have to deal with. Well, it's not lethal, so what we're going to do here is a little bit of gambling. We've got Arcane Bombardment. We are one mana shy of being able to use it eventually, or immediately. And um, our opponent's got Gala Greeters here to follow up. Would have really loved to be able to play play with fire there, and luckily our opponent couldn't burn us out on this one. So we've got this turn to dig ourselves out. We're going to go Gix's Command, 
We're going to make them sacrifice everything, and we pull up Brotherhood's End with Arcane Bombardment. Not the greatest pull, and we are still in danger of getting burned out by a lightning strike here. Luckily, nothing from our opponent's hand to finish us off, so we really gotta hurry. We're gonna pull up Beseech the Mirror. Nothing to bargain with, so it's just a tutor. Just. And we're gonna go looking for a card here. That's always the problem with these toolbox decks, is it takes a while for me, at least, to learn what options I've got available. I pulled up an Obnixilus here, thinking we could start gaining some life back with some devils, but the more I thought about it, the more I kind of regretted that plan. We're gonna go Urabrask's Forge instead. And just reading Obnixilis again here, we probably should have waited for the token to get generated, and we could have had two copies by sacrificing the Forge token. But, you know, live and learn. I don't play Obnixilis that much. So we pick up a uh, Flick of Coin. We're going to make a Devil so that Obnixilis' ability is finally relevant. And then we're going to Beseech away the generated Forge token. Activates Bombardment. We're going to go searching some more. We're going to bargain again with this other token and just go looking for everything we can find to keep us alive in this game. You can see we're making some tough choices here. Picking up Soul Transfer so that we can get our own Shieldred back and play her again. And then I don't quite know what to pull here. I've got an Urborg Repossession that I probably should have read more carefully. It does gain us life. However, you do need to have a valid target for it for it to work. But our opponent scoops it up anyway. Good game. Now we're moving on to game two here. Got definitely more mana to start ourselves off with. Our opponent's on blue-black, which could definitely go a couple of different ways in standard these days. And this was back when I still had one copy of Decadent Dragon in our deck. Uh, I really like playing Decadent Dragon. It gives me a great uh, way to steal cards from our opponent, which is probably one of my favorite things to be doing outside of certain red enchantments. Opponent starts off with a Liliana of the Veil here gonna make us discard but that's something we don't mind so much we've got a couple of go for the throats but our opponent really hasn't shown us a very aggressive start we hit him with the dragon but we find only lands off the top of their deck so we're gonna start playing those and conserving some of the cards in our hand in case we happen to pick up a big score later on and need something else to discard now we do have a beseech in hand but nothing to bargain it with and Liliana is gonna make us discard so we're kind of seeing that one coming um, I think I was worried here that they might have other discard spells, and so if we Beseeched, they'd be really tempted to hit us with like a discard 2 or a Duress, and I didn't want to lose the thing we had tutored for, especially since we didn't really know what's up yet. A lot of times you see blue and black, it can be a uh, poison deck, sometimes it's straight Demir control, and now a uh, few people are messing around with like a Fairies deck, a blue-black Fairies deck. Well, our opponent's got the Mind Splice apparatus, though, and I remember not really thinking, not really thinking of what they were going to play. So we're kind of firing off a few things here, trying to draw some more cards. Luckily, we find a bombardment, but we're going to go beseeching instead. So we've got the ability to bargain thanks to this treasure token, but we don't need it. The thing I am looking for is Shieldred's Edict to get Liliana off of the board. I'm tired of discarding cards. We don't need that. And you can see here, this is what the Mind Splice apparatus was all about. They've got to breach the multiverse. They don't find anything from us because our dragon is off in exile. So they just pull up a Jace, make us mill a few cards, but they do get a nice draw three off of that. So that's kind of nasty for us. Still need to find an answer to some of this stuff. So what we're going to do here is Brotherhood's End. Got to get that Jace off of the board. I'm reading Ashiok, trying to decide if it makes sense to do Ashiok versus the dragon. We opt for Ashiok here. We're able to put a few things onto the board, and I realize that Ash Ashiok is going to help us find some more spells off the top of our deck with his first exile ability. Excuse me, their exile ability. Of course, Ashiok bites it to a Shieldred's Edict, and they play a uh, ghastly... I forget the name of that card, but it makes copies of our spirit tokens. An interesting choice from our opponent. I like that they've included that in case they mill it themselves and they can start copying nice things that the opponent is uh, is doing. We're going to play out our dragon. I expect our opponent has some more removal, but feeling a little bit safer to start playing things to the board. I don't think the mind splice also is going to be relevant much for the rest of the game. Our opponent's got so much mana. If they're going to breach us, they're going to breach us whether that's on the board or not. So opponent here gives us the option to sacrifice and then hits us with a cut your losses. So we at least get rid of the thing that's gonna copy our nightmares. And then it mills half of our deck. 
but it doesn't mill our whole deck, so we are still in this no matter how many more times they cast that on us. We are pretty much going to be safe. We attack here with our dragon to the face and bring down Liliana with our nightmare. Now the nightmare does trigger when arcane bombardment pulls things into exile with its ability. So even if Ashiok's not around, we can still use that ability. We're going to exile the apparatus just because it's a nice target for Terra Sunder where we might not otherwise have them. And right now it's just looking like spirit beatdowns with this nightmare. As our opponent is empty handed, hoping to rip a breach the multiverse off the top. We get Flick a Coin, keep the bombardment stuff coming. Flick a Coin finds us a cut down. And opponent scoops it up. All right, we've got an interesting one here. We've got Obnixilis in hand. Hopefully I've learned how to play him a little bit better. I don't know if you've noticed in some of my videos, but uh, often the play gets better the more, more games I get in with the deck. We've got Virtue of Persistence in here, of course, and it looks like our opponent is going mono-red creatures, trying to get aggressive. We make some early plays to take out the Phoenix Chick. Brotherhood's End is a nice option for the future. And they've got Squee, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that right now, leaving them with just the one creature on board. Trying to get them to play a few other things so that uh, Brotherhood's End has some better targets gives us more than just a one for one. So they go Epicure, makes a blood token, hits us with a lightning strike, and does end the festivities as well. Amazingly, we're still just at 15, even though the opponent has played so many cards. So it might be safe to get Obnixilis down now. I kind of need a token on the board if we're going to start Besieging. So you can see we just make a devil right there. Besiege is great, but it's even better when you've got tokens on the board. So they decide to bring Squee back from the dead and just go all in on Obnixilis. Now this is another scenario where in our deck, we don't really care so much if Obnixilis dies. <laughs> I was more worried that they would shoot down our devil and that we couldn't beseech. So we attack with the devil first, beseech the mirror with bargain and sacrifice it, do a nice one damage to one of their creatures. And with beseech, we can go ca casting a four cost spell for free. Shieldred is right there for us when we need her. A great find against a aggressive deck. Hopefully survives long enough to give us some life back. Opponent's got the double monstrous rage here. Draws a little bit and pings themselves with a little bit of damage thanks to that blood token and they go attacking. Well, we can safely block one of the tokens. Squee hits us a little bit, but we gain some of that life right back and we're able to go Gix's command. We're gonna give Shieldred lifelink and make them sacrifice Squee, immediately go in for the attack. We gain six more life off of that attack. And so I'm kind of feeling really good at this point. Opponent starts drawing cards and shocking themselves, paying the price for each time. I believe they do it a little bit more. I think they actually hit this other blood token. Yep, and opponent scoops it up, good game. Now for this game, you can see we've got the uh, removal spell that also gives us some food in our opening hand. There's a reason there's only one copy of that in this deck. It's okay, but it's not great. We can go searching for it if it's really the right card in that situation, but I don't think we need four of them in here. Uh, we remove the Tangled Colony immediately before it can create any extra rats. I've been seeing a few rat decks on the ladder. This appears to fit right in with uh, one of them. Uh, the Kerumonix, the one that gives it Toxic, definitely got to go because th that really speeds up the clock, especially when opponents can generate hasty rat tokens. There's some more rats along the way. We've got the Reckoner Raid. We are up to four mana here. We can Besiege with Bargain, but it doesn't feel like we are under that much of a threat yet. We can flick a coin one of these rats away. We're only taking two damage here and we still develop our board. Just trying to dig towards some of our later game stuff. They've got the uh, Lord Skitter's Butcher here. Kind of a nice addition to rat decks. And I think now it's pretty safe to go beseeching the mirror. We're gonna sacrifice our token and taking an extra look at the board there. So we could grab some of our expensive stuff, but just looking at our opponent's hand, think it makes sense to get rid of some of these creatures. We do have a second Besiege in hand. If we want to go looking for one of our arcane, well, our only arcane bombardment in a turn or two. 
So this is the card that I was talking about, the, the Song of Totentons. Creates some hasty rats and really can just give the rat deck some comes out of nowhere capability. We're beseeching again here with Bargain because I know I want Shieldred to help get us back into this. They're low on cards, hopefully they're low on removal. We're gonna block one of these rats, go down to four, and then back up to six. Well, we've hit six lands, so that means we can either Ashiok here or Beseech. We're gonna go Ashiok because we're gonna make some nightmares. That makes it a little bit harder for the rats to touch us. I was fearing another uh, Song of Totentons off the top. We're double blocking the uh, rat saga because it's got menace and I don't want any, any tricks coming my way. And they've got Nashi, luckily not able to play anything off of that Nashi that they ninja'd in. I decide it's better to have that off of the board and we're gonna go bargaining with Beseech because these nightmare tokens are bargainable. Just grabbing a big score. It draws us two cards, gives us two treasures, but more importantly, gives us two shieldred triggers as we go back up to nine and stay in this. We pick up a duress, so let's have a look at what's going on. Only a Gix's command, and opponent decides to scoop it up. That was a good one. All right, we've got some nice openers here. I think I, what I like about this version of Bombardment with Beseech is that we've been able to run a lot of cheap spells, but not really lose the uh, late game haymaker power that we've got in some of our other decks. Gonna remove that uh, farm hand, keep Obnixilis safe, threaten to continually use him in the future. A lot of the white decks that play farm hand tend to lean in the control direction these days. And our opponent, you can see, was worried about that as they fire off a fateful absence, but little do they know we don't care about Obnixilis. We want his tokens, and opponent has actually given us a free token to bargain with if we don't need to draw with it in the near future. Flick a coin, a nice addition to all these decks. Kind of helps us move things along a little bit. You can see I'm feeling token rich here, so I sacrifice the clue to draw. And I see we get a Zeotora's Proving Ground off the top. Eminently cyclable with the mana we've got available. Great. And I'm holding back off attacks here because opponent is most likely holding up the four mana Wandering Emperor. And I don't want to lose one of our bargainable tokens. The one damage, two damage we might get in, that trade-off is not worth it. Not right now. So opponent's got Elsbeth Resplendent. Definitely a control-y, control-leaning build. They get a nice protected wedding announcement off of that, which is great. However, we draw our Terra Sunder, which is definitely not fair in this situation. In response to our duress, they march our token off the board, and we see lots of removal here. So we take Farewell, because I kind of have a thing against that card, and we decide to remove wedding announcement with Terra Sunder's exile effect, getting around the shield token. So my long-term plan becomes in this game, I'm looking for Arcane Bombardment because I know that's gonna give us an overwhelming advantage as we reuse all of our early stuff. So I'm thinking we're pretty safe. We just kind of need to start digging into Bombardment, but it's just not coming up. We're not getting any of our card draw things. Meanwhile, our, oppo our opponent slowly filling their hand back up and I'm kind of just waiting for them to land another big Planeswalker. So we've got Virtue of Persistence here off the top. It's definitely one of our late game win cons, but I'm passing here. We're a little bit short on mana to play it. So opponent still just plinking away with the farm hand. We draw our land and go for the virtue of persistence. Now I'm putting this out because we kind of need to start moving this game along. I'm hopeful that our opponent doesn't have the removal for it, but they must have drawn that Urza's Silex. So they go ahead and they activate it and we lose it right away back down to six lands, which is a little bit painful. We pick up a Beseech the Mirror off the top though, and we go Bargainless. We're just gonna use it like a four mana classic tutor, and I find old arcane bombardment. So opponent's got some direct removal for everything but enchantments. So we go for arcane bombardment, and hopefully they haven't drawn the other copy of Farewell that most of these decks play. Okay, so they didn't fire one off, they didn't borrow time it, so just trying to pick which spell to do so that we can do spells on everybody's turn. They protect themselves with the Surge, and we pull up a useless Terra Sunder, unfortunately. 
We've got Shieldred's Edict in our back pocket for the opponent's turn so that we can activate it even on an empty board. But the opponent gives us something to target anyway. We've got this token going off first. We're going to use our go for the throat. The logic here is that we use go for the throat while there's a creature on board, which probably isn't going to happen that often between our two decks. And I knew we had Shieldred's Edict here that we could just fire off and get rid of uh, the big Wandering Emperor anyway. So I'm really kind of thinking about this Unleash the Inferno there. We've got so many options to try and deal with the Wandering Emperor. I end up on just the simpler approach. We're going to go Shieldred's Edict, have them sacrifice the Planeswalker. We pull up a Beseech, which is really nice for us. We do have a spare treasure we could bargain with. And we've got an extra flick of coin under there. So we're going to fire off a few spells here. Another Beseech off the top. Take a big score just to keep the options coming. We've got Ashiok in hand. We've got Forge. But I don't want to play these too much to the board because I'm worried about a second Farewell, which can hit all of these. So we're going to play out the Forge, but we're going to keep Ashiok back for the moment. Now, our opponent's got lots of removal in hand, but hopefully not removal for our stuff. And they scoop it up. Great game. 